Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Detroit's suspected serial killer makes a court appearance and our cameras are there. What we're learning new about this case. This Waterford priest removed from ministry after what the Detroit Archdiocese is calling credible allegations of sex abuse. All coming up, but we're going to begin with rain on 4 Live Radar. It's been that way for most of the day. We really need to dry out heading into, can you believe, the first day of summer? Still yeah. waiting for it to feel like it. That's right. And we want to get right over to Ben here off the top at 5. Is it finally moving out now, Ben? Slowly but surely, Kim and Devin. That's the back edge of it, which we thought would never uh, get past really 275 because it looked like this stuff was just regenerating on top of itself all afternoon. There's some pockets of moderate rain up here in St. Clair County. That's north of 69. Looks like there's another pocket down here towards Lake Erie. Of course, the east side is somewhere that we definitely don't need any more rain, uh, but it's not going to be long for the world. Probably another couple hours and we'll be completely dry. Most of this stuff is pretty light. Overnight, we'll see the clouds clear out and a fantastic welcome to summer tomorrow. Changes in our favor for the weekend. We'll look at Saturday and Sunday. Monday for fireworks not looking so good. We'll run that down for you in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben. Our other top story tonight, a Catholic priest in Waterford Township has been barred from all public ministry amid allegations of sex abuse. Reverend John Baker worked out of uh, St. Perpetua Church on Airport Road until the diocese put the restrictions in place 24 hours ago. Coco McAvoy has a look at the allegations and shows us Baker's long history of work in parishes across Metro Detroit. Father Joseph Baker last served as pastor here at St. Perpetua Church for 11 years, and now he's facing serious allegations of sexual abuse. The allegations surrounding Father Joseph Baker go back to his early days in ministry. The priest served 26 years at several churches in Metro Detroit, but now he's restricted from all public ministry after an allegation of sexual abuse involving a child. The allegation was reported to the attorney general's office. The concern um, has been and continues to be that um, abuse was taking place um, and victims needed a place to be able to report that abuse. The attorney general's office has received at least 500 tips of alleged sexual abuse involving clergy members since the first of the year. And we are pursuing every potential charge we can to make sure that justice is done for those victims. Baker's most recent assignments were at two churches in Inkster and two others in Waterford, the Kevin and Norbert Parish, Holy Family Parish, St. Benedict Parish, and St. Perpetua. He's now stepped down as pastor from St. Perpetua, and a bishop will take his place as the investigation continues. And the spokesperson for the attorney general's office is really encouraging people to come forward if they've suffered abuse. So we have all the information on our website. Click on Detroit.com on how to record it. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Okay, Coco, we'll let you get out of the rain. Now to brand new developments in the Detroit serial killer investigation. Today, the suspect in the case, D'Angelo Martin, made his first in-person court appearance as new developments are coming to light in the case. Let's get to Sean Lay live. And Sean, he didn't say much in court, but his attorney sure did. We were very interested in talking to his court-appointed attorney outside of court, Kimberly. More on his interaction with D'Angelo Martin behind bars in just a moment. Let's recap this for everyone. Sources telling us police believe Martin is now linked to the murders of four women, Nancy Harrison, Travis Seen, Ellis, Tammy Jones, and a new case, Annetta Nelson. Today, Martin was in court for an attack on a woman that took place May 7th. It's that attack that put him on investigators' radar. Calling case number 1958054. Suspected serial killer D'Angelo Martin is charged with assault with intent to murder and a long list of criminal sexual assault crimes against a woman that took place May 7th. The 26 year old victim from Port Huron, her family tells us, was savagely attacked inside what sources confirm is Martin's grandparents' home on Barlow at Lappin on the city's east side. Today in court, Martin said his name and agreed to have his preliminary hearing pushed back a few days. His attorney says Martin understands everything that's going on. I've met him in the jail. He and I have uh, discussed a number of matters, and his, uh, he understands 
uh, the situation. He understands the charges. Martin is connected to, but not yet charged with the murders of Nancy Harris and Travis St. Ellis, Tammy Jones. And now sources confirm a woman named Annetta Nelson. He's a very personable individual, um, very reasonable. Uh, his mental uh, attitude was, was positive. And uh, that's my first initial impressions of him. Stay tuned to every step of this case. The next step in this particular court case, July 16th, Kimberly, we're told there'll be nine witnesses, including the victim's medical records presented in court that day. That's for that May 7th attack that started this whole investigation. Back right. to you. Yeah, and Sean, I know uh, there are two other cases you've reported on, Yvonne Coburn and Deborah Reynolds. You checked on those cases today. Anything new? Yvonne was found murdered, Deborah Reynolds still missing. Checked with our sources, also checked with family members. Those cases are still in the pipeline, still rather unsolved. They're still working on every element of those cases, not yet linked to the D'Angelo Martin case. Yeah. Okay, keep us posted, Sean. Thanks. Quicken Loans Chairman Dan Gilbert has been discharged from the hospital. This morning, Quicken Loans CEO Jay Farner released a statement saying that Gilbert was discharged and is now at an inpatient rehabilitation center where he will continue his recovery. It was May 26 that Gilbert suffered a stroke while in the hospital and immediately underwent a procedure there where he had been since now being released. Paul Whelan, the former Marine and Novi man currently being held in Russia, was back in court today. Whelan is accused of espionage and has been in a prison in Russia since late last year. Last month, he had been threatened by Russian investigators while in custody, and his imprisonment is in retaliation into U.S. sanctions on Russia. During today's appeal hearing, Whelan called on President Trump to help him get released. Mr. President, we cannot keep America great unless we aggressively protect and defend American citizens wherever they are in the world. A judge denied Whelan's appeal and extended his imprisonment until late August. Today, search crews were back in the water in Gibraltar searching for a woman who jumped in and never came back to the surface. She went into the water just offshore in Gibraltar, right at the southern tip of Gros Eel there. Our Tim Pamplin is there with new information on who they're looking for. A crew from the Down River dive team have been on site all day today searching for this 42-year-old Ohio woman being told she came up here yesterday with friends on a boat to visit other friends here down river when she went in for a swim and was never seen again. Crews have been on scene here all night at Humbug Marina in Gibraltar. Three boats going up and down in a grid pattern with sonar trying to find her body. Crews on shore with binoculars scanning the surface, hoping to bring closure to her family. Many have speculated that in 12 hours her body could be down in Lake Erie. The captain here on scene says not so quick. The current here is only about three knots. They believe she is still in these waters around the southern tip of Gros Seal. That is the scene in Gibraltar this afternoon. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, Tim. President Trump says Iran made a very big mistake after shooting down a U.S. naval surveillance drone. But when asked how he'll respond, the president said, you'll see. President Trump puts Iran on notice after U.S. Central Command says Iran shot down one of its surveillance naval drones. Now, Iran made a big mistake. Uh, this drone was in international waters, clearly. We have it all documented. Iran's Revolutionary Guard says it shot down the drone in Iranian airspace. The Pentagon released video they say proves otherwise. This was an unprovoked attack on a U.S. surveillance asset that had not violated Iranian airspace at any time. The president said, fortunately, this was an unmanned drone and hinted this may have been an accident. He has said he does not want war with Iran, but would not comment on whether the U.S. will strike back. This is a new fly in the ointment, what happened shooting down the drone. And uh, this country will not stand for it, that I can tell you. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, among 20 congressional leaders briefed on the incident, is urging diplomacy. There's no appetite for going to war in our country. The commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard says Iran has no intention of war, but this strike follows the attack of two oil tankers in the Gulf last week. U.S. military says Iran was responsible for that, though Iran denies it. We're not going to let them disrupt navigation of the seas attack our allies and U.S. interests without paying a price. So if they're itching for a fight, they're going to get one. The attack comes as Iran threatens to increase its uranium stockpiles after the U.S. pulled out of the 2015 International Nuclear Accord.
Also, at that uh, White House moment there with the press today, along with the Canadian Prime Minister, President Trump announced Roger Penske will be awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The medal is the highest honor a civilian can receive. It's given for special contributions to society. The Detroit Zoo's new Penguin Center is going to be closed for a few months for repairs. Yeah, the Polk Penguin Conservation Center will shut down starting this September and will remain closed until June of next year. According to the zoo, repairs have to be made due to faulty waterproofing by the construction contractor. Currently, several gallons of groundwater seep into and have to be pumped out of the building every day. All right, we're off and running here on a Thursday. Here's Jason. A drag racer teaching teens how to play it safe behind the wheel. Personally motivated to keep them focused on the road. You know what, it's good therapy for me. See how his work behind the wheel is making an impact. Also, if you thought it was bad here, new tonight, we'll take you to another part of Michigan that got absolutely swamped with rain. But first, he was put in a position of trust, but police say the only thing this teacher used it for is to prey on young girls. A horrifying case unfolding right now just to the south in Ohio. That story's next.